it meant anything goes. Anyone could die, anyone could fall in love, anyone could die, anyone could fall in love, anyone could die, anyone could die. Agent Apocalypse. Concept was so cool. Agent Apocalypse. Concept was so cool. People couldn't believe it. They had to believe it. People couldn't believe it. They had to believe it. Gary Butterfield. And this is Days of Future Cast, the podcast where Gary and I cover everything X-Men related, and we're here to kick off a 90s crossover event. That's right, Radio Free Midworld, come it onto the podcast, and we're going to talk <laughs> about the Gunslinger comics. Hello, I'm Cole Ross. <laughs> Very good. Um, I like that. <laughs> welcome to the Stephen King podcast. Um, it's uh, Silent Hill also. Can you put a little iron glass so on that for me? Just Because I'm almost there. I need to finish. <laughs> Our class. <laughs> uh, Age of Apocalypse, Gary. Are you ready? X Men Alpha. X Men Alpha. Alpha Brain Medicine. Um, yeah. Let's uh, let's let's talk about the uh, the the art before we get into it. Maybe. Yeah, it's um, it's art. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This, it is it is extremely 90s. Uh everybody has tons of hair. Things are spiking up all over the place. There's scarves and other kinds of fabric just trailing off of just about everything. Everybody is super buff and has huge tits and it's it's 90s. Yeah. It's uh it's it's Roger Cruz uh is our guy during this. Uh Joe Madureira does the cover, but Roger Cruz is our guy initially who is a very uh, a Brazilian artist who is very 90s house style. Yes. Uh, this is, you know, people who kind of wanted to be like um, Jim Lee, you know, I feel like, uh, and have that kind of a little bit like a little scratchy, a little overly detailed, you know, uh, 90s X-Men art. Uh, this is what comics looked like back then. Yeah. And I think this works i think some of it works some of it is just absolutely ridiculous and it works and some of it is just Mm -hmm. so fucking ridiculous like even as nostalgic 90s boys jeremy greer i i I can't get behind it like i think some of it is is just genuinely awful um Mm -hmm. how i'll be very curious and when we get to the feedback episode like i'd be curious if people are reading this for the first time like how you are interpreting these things because i find a lot of it can be really difficult to read at times just to figure out what's going on on the page Um, yeah and i think that's i think the over the topness of everything makes actually what's happening in a given panel a little bit difficult what it is that i found like the common thread between it being like or when it's hard to read uh or hard to follow is when there's like an energy effect going on you know it's it's like it's like a weird it's like the video game equivalent of too many particle effects yeah going on um if it's just people standing around i generally get it uh in this but and it's like some action like people punching each other looks great uh with this guy but people shooting beams or doing things like that it tends to look pretty weird and we'll we'll call that out so let's uh let's get started talking about the cover um so yeah. I'm, are you on you're on comicsology with this or not comics marvel universe uh, marvel, uh i am i'm on my ipad because it doesn't like me being logged in at two places at once um, I was just uh, making sure am, we're, yeah. we're looking at the same page. This is like the two page spread cover. Um, mm-hmm. Also, we didn't really plan this correctly because this one's an extra double thick issue. So this is 44 pages we're about to go through. Oh, right yeah. Now. And the next one will be over in two seconds. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll, we'll see how we feel. If this ends up feeling like a two parter, we can change things. Yeah, I guess so. I, gu- uh, I guess we yeah. could definitely do that. Yeah. Um, this was a special. This isn't a, any specific X Men issue. The idea here is that this is introducing all of these little runs, and that's why the cover shows people from different crossovers. Like we're getting our X-Men uh, that we deal with, but we're also getting the members of generation next and Gambit and the externals and uh, you know, Nightcrawler going on off and Wolverine as well. Yes. which are their own comics in this. 
Um, our cover shows us a bunch of these new character designs. Um, I think the first thing that you would probably focus on is Wolverine is missing a hand. He's just got like a, what looks like because of the art, a hollow area, which I know is just a flat thing, but it does definitely looks like a hollow area. Like he's a mega man. Yeah. Right. Like someone's about (laughs) to plug a buster in there into that guy. (laughs) (laughs) Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, he, him missing a hand, you know, uh Oh, something's happened. That's always missing an eye or hand is always code for future. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, and then if you look at the back, this was originally the back cover. Um, <laughs> this is punished you, Wolverine. I just, <laughs> <laughs> um, looking on the back cover, you get that saber tooth is also, uh, there, um, with a re- much more conservative and less beastly design than he usually has. And that was, you know, uh, this is kind of before he had done very much dalliancing with being a hero. Yeah. So having them together, you're like, Oh, what the hell? Like those guys aren't going to be on the same team. And they're not like we eventually we find about, you know, find out about their falling out and all that jazz, their history. Yeah. Um, I, notable in this too is Colossus who is wearing like a wrestling mask for some reason or like a mask mm-hmm. that a wrestler would wear or like a, maybe a Zorro mask would be more appropriate for Zorro this. mask. Yeah. 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 Yep. Um, yeah. So just like some, some weird design, some interesting things here. Um, I think, like I, I like Magneto in the back, like standing next to like what looks like a depressed rogue and just looking fucking ripped as hell. Dude is jacked <laughs> beyond belief. He's very proud too. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, whereas his wife is not, um, we'll, we'll get into the individual designs as the characters pop up in general. I take a lot of pleasure in these. Mm-hmm. Like, it's a weird thing. Like I, I, I like these, these alternate interpretations, even when they're not better, I just get jazzed for alternate versions of characters. Sure. Yeah. I talked yeah. about uh, going to, uncanny x-men.net and like browsing the character profiles and reading about those um i also absolutely adore this version of sunfire um but before i got rid of my huge action figure collection they made an action figure of the sunfire and he was extremely cool looking it just says um, I, I know it's not but it really sounded like you said it your huge accent figure collection <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it's a <laughs> yeah there's huge accent i get i get a uh and, and that's not even huge jackman it's Hugh Jackson, like another guy. It was still funny. It's <laughs> yeah, just a guy named yeah. Hugh Jackson that you're like really into. Yeah, I keep making customs of him. The uh, uh, shout out to Yokai Customs. Um, so yeah, so th- this is uh, air introduction, and we're gonna get all this stuff inside. The whole point of this issue is to set us up with the world state a little bit. Um, so let's uh, let's get into it. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Um, we start off with uh, a character we don't know who it is. We're going to later find out this is Bishop um, climbing over a mountain of corpses in Seattle. Uh, this takes place in the Pacific Northwest. I'm looking forward to the part that takes place in Portland, which is coming up. And I want to see if I recognize anything from it because this does not look like <laughs> Seattle. Uh, does it? I mean, have you have you seen anything yet? Uh, no, I've not seen anything yet. I think it just looks like a generic city and they chose the West Coast to contrast with the East Coast. Cool. So. Um, so he's digging through corpses and kind of doing a monologue, uh, which basically is, you know, this has been going on for a long time. Um, this is a pile of corpses that are humans that are being, um, basically just wiped out. Uh, most have gone to like Canada to avoid all of this. Um, and then a little girl runs up and seeks help from this, this, this dude. Yeah. Uh, she's a human girl. She's running away and they're running away from something called the infinites. Uh, which are apocalypses like foot soldiers uh, yeah. it. and it's like what they use for generic mutants the leader of this team is like a named character uh but generally uh they are just generic kind of like i don't they're not robots like they're guys in like power suits uh but presumably also mutants because they have to be I guess um so. yeah you know uh just to, to work with apocalypse's thing um they show up there and the infinites are these guys in these like this green power armor uh stuff which are pretty goofy looking and ripped to a degree that is hard to manage. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hard to put a yeah. shirt on. Yeah. Uh, hard to, yeah, like a uh, big and tall, Apocalypse the big and tall boys show up. Hiring practices. Like I've been playing a lot of breath of the wild recently. And, um, the, there's a subplot in there where like you can buy your own home for like this construction company and the construction mm-hmm. company guy only hires dudes whose last names end with son. So there's like Hudson and Kidson and all that kind of stuff. Um, so like apocalypse is required for, for this. Gig. Yeah. Jackson, Hugh Jackson, um, the apocalypse required, like you must be a mutant. You must be ripped. And also we're going to put you in generic looking like green armor. And you're like, but yep. my, my superpower is, you know, I can, I can I go through wings. walls. Well, not, not anymore. Cause yeah. you have to wear the super, <laughs> you have to wear this armor. It's like the Hooters uniform. 
Like he's, he's basically got like reverse Hooters hiring practices. <laughs> like, it's pretty fucked up. Uh, uh, but this, this is, this is a, a well-known X-Men jabroni. This is a uh, Eunice uh, here who in the last uh, run of this show, Jean Grey calls Bambino um, when they find him in the ruins of Genosha. This is Eunice the untouchable. Oh, cool. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I didn't even put that together. I'd already forgotten. You know how I am with names anyway. So I already forgotten about that yeah. dude. Well, Eunice is a very minor character. Yeah. Uh, like he creates force fields, but in this, it's just energy blast. Yes. Uh, you know, because that's, that's this artist. Um, and they're chasing this human and they're very surprised to find another human here. They thought they had known all the humans. Uh, and he's kind of given his men shit like, Hey, your scanners had told us there were no more humans here other than this little girl. And they're surprised to find Bishop. Yeah. Um, you know, they, uh, they're kind of ribbing each other and he tries to use a crushing force field, uh, where Bishop, we don't know his Bishop just yet, um, absorbs the energy because that's Bishop's power. Yes. Um, also a little bit of slang here. The, the infinites keep calling humans flat scans. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Cause they all watched the movie scanners and were like, I'm going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, did you ever see uh, the movie pop star? Oh, fuck yeah, dude. That's one of my like yeah. favorite like I, underrated me, me movies too. of all time, dude. Come on. So, yeah. the, the bit with, with Bill Hader where he's like the roadie who likes flatlining in his spare time. Yes. <laughs> I fuck, that scene fucking destroys me. That whole movie is amazing. That whole like, movie uh, is fucking I, great. Yeah. Like that's one of like me and Autumn are a little too tipsy and should go to bed, but like let's watch fucking Popstar. <laughs> like yeah, let's yeah. get it. I, that movie's incredible. I like I uh, I like flatlining. I uh, got the idea of that movie Flatliners. <laughs> it's very funny. It's very um, good. Uh, so they're shocked to find out Bishop's a mutant. Yes. Uh, and they're going to try to kill him. Uh, but he, uh, you know, trying to destroy him cause they think he's a traitor. And when they're about to kill him, the X-Men show up. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, the X-Men are Iceman, Storm, Quicksilver, uh, Nightcrawler, Magneto, Rogue, a morph that looks like an alien blink, uh, Sabretooth and Sabretooth <laughs> is, has a, has a pet guy named wild child. <laughs> can we, I, I want to talk about all these guys, but can we camp out on wild child for a minute? What's happening with this dude, my man? What's going on with yeah. wild child? Like why is uh, he, is he not house? Is that why, he's why is leash? wild child? <laughs> wild child is a member of alpha flight. Yeah. Uh, in the real universe, but because professor Charles Xavier died, Sabretooth owns him and dresses him up like Sabretooth, <laughs> which is like, just very funny to me. Like, well, if Xavier had still been around, I wouldn't make this person a miniature version of me that's a slave. But since Xavier's not around, we need it's to, time for me to do this. Do you know that picture that floats around of um, the kid who plays Harry Potter? Um, and he's like walking 18 dogs. Like, we need Sabretooth sure. walking like 18 mutants that are all dressed <laughs> like him. Like, yeah. like, we need that art in our lives somewhere. I also want to talk about Sabretooth's costume in which he has two rectangles of uh, flesh uh, on his thigh. <laughs> You've heard of ripped jeans. Are you here for laser cut openings in your jeans? <laughs> yeah, these like 3D printed jean technology they use in the future. They're not jeans. They're not jeans. Um, maybe <laughs> maybe he has like an allergy, right? Like maybe this is for his uh, EpiPen so he can just get yeah. right in there without like Oh, that's true. Maybe it's you know bullet what I'm resistant. Yeah. And he can't he can't inject it into his arm. Sure. Uh, his guns, his like ludicrously oversized guns. How many abs does he have? When when is an ab not a peck, <laughs> and when is a peck not an ab? <laughs> is a question we each should of, ask. Each of his individual pecs has a miniature ab under it. I know. Uh, it's a lot of abs, man. Like th- this is uh, this is some art. This is. This um, is uh, you also know that Nightcrawler is serious because he has like an eye thing. He has a, a little mark yeah, yeah. going through one of his eyes, which is what I do with every character creator that lets me do it, which is how I know me that too. I am extra. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I, I'm a cool badass. Um, let's go through these uh, the, through these guys. They're a team here that we're, we're dealing yeah. with. So we have Sabretooth and Mini-Me, like a little wild child. And there's a lot of him like, maybe I should just let wild child off the leash. Uh, but he's just, <laughs> he's just a worse version of you. It's fucking weird, man. Yeah. Um, Blink who is the breakout character of this whole event uh, introduced dies really early on in the phalanx covenant, um, which she was kind of a breakout character there and people were bummed out. But then the idea was this alternate reality. If it wasn't for Charles Xavier, she would have lived. And uh, you know, so this is her breakout version. Of her. Yep. Uh, we got storm short hair storm. So she's, mm-hmm. uh, she's been in quarantine for a little while. She buzzed it at the very first of quarantine and now it's grown <laughs> yeah. out a little bit. Doesn't want to buzz it yep. again. Um, Quicksilver, who just kind of looks like Quicksilver. Like, I don't, yeah. like, it just looks like normal. Like, I guess that dude was so edgy to begin with. They were like, no, nah, let's not touch it. He's a, uh, in terms of personality, they really dial Quicksilver back. Cause I think he's one of the 
you know, characters have a pretty strong personality on the X-Men. And here he's just kind of a guy, um, which makes sense with her, with his dad being a Charles Xavier figure. Mm -hmm. Um, he's also romantically involved with storm now. Um, Rogan and Magneto are also romantically involved. They have a kid. They're married. That has some basis in the, uh, the actual comics. Like there's always been like a weird little attraction Yeah, there. Um, you know, they, they've, uh, they've had that happen before and Magneto can touch her using magnetic, uh, for fields and shit. So. Yeah. Like when it was revealed that they have a baby together, uh, yes. you just have to, you have to take a step and be like, okay, 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 okay. Yeah. Oh, oh. Okay. I, okay. I was okay. Re- reading about this crossover uh, last night and like internet fans and questions they had about it. And they were like, okay, I understand how Magneto could have sex with Rogue because he has a magnetic field. How could Rogue have a baby without absorbing its powers? And I didn't have an answer for it. <laughs> it's like, yeah. No, I mean, the answer is right there. Like how Scott and Alex are immune to each other's powers, right? Oh, I guess that's true. Like oh, fuck, she, she, yeah. <laughs> she got in one. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Nailed it. Um, I take cash, oh, check, gold, and cigarette cards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give, give you a, a no prize for that. Good one. Um, but yeah, so they're, they're romantically involved. Uh, we got Iceman, who is now pure, like a being of pure ice. Like he can turn himself into, he's like an ice golem now. He's not like a person. Hell yeah. Um, so this is, you know, him fulfilling his potential. And then Morph, uh, who in this, as opposed to being like changeling, uh, which is the closest thing he's, uh, you know, based on, or Chameleon, rather, based on in the X-Men comics, he can turn into anything. Mm-hmm. He's like a uh, plastic man. He's not like, um, you know, just a shapeshifter to turn to people. Notably, in this issue, he turns into a brick wall complete with mortar, which I really like yeah. the attention to detail that Morph puts into his work. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It could just be well, a that's flat wall. Wolverine loves him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, that addic- um, it's that indication to the comedy bit yes. that gets Wolverine yeah. going. <laughs> yeah, just Wolverine somewhere on the other side of the world, just like, <laughs> <laughs> there's a uh, just in, enjoying it uh but that's that's our team uh that we're introduced to here now there are more x-men we're gonna see them later yeah and so a fight kicks off and uh we learned some things about our characters uh notably that rogue is uh a little bit more savage than you'd expect from an x-man um as is nightcrawler like all of the x-men seem to have a little bit more of an edge to them as far as what they're willing to do um we see yeah. like we see them like knocking people over we see rogue hitting people with the force of a sonic boom and, and morph morphing into the aforementioned brick wall so that they slam into it which you would think that that hurts um <laughs> also would kill him <laughs> uh we're, we're we're set up with the relationship between Sabretooth and blink which is obviously supposed to be a parallel between wolverine and jubilee or wolverine and shadow cat uh you know the idea that he is the wolverine figure and she is uh his mentee yes you know so he's like you know get back behind me um and blink wants them to be more merciful but Sabretooth is being Sabretooth. like everybody is just fucking everybody up but they're not pure grim dark like uh nightcrawler is still goofing you know he's like a little darker but he's not like teleporting people's heads off just yet uh that will happen soon Yes. Um, we get this picture of Storm, Gary, that, mm-hmm. uh, dude. <laughs> you, 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 what, mm. Like the spine twist? Do you have an hard time yeah. with the, uh, yeah. the, uh, the, the spine? Like, you know how a cat can fit through anything bigger <laughs> than its head? Storm can fit through anything bigger than her waist, which means she can, like, sluice through, like, portholes on a ship and stuff. I'm trying to remember, there used to be a Tumblr blog that, like, collected um, the spinal mishaps like this, of just mm-hmm. women who, like, that are drawn such that you can see every available um, sexual organ of their bodies at all times. <laughs> like, um, I, yeah, this is just, like, this is tip- This is the 90s stuff that people see and are like, oh, yeah, this is terrible. Yeah. Um, it's It's dumb as hell. Unus gets the drop on Magneto and he has a plastic gun filled with plastic bullets. Um, and this is when uh, Magneto is saved by Iceman who literally just freezes this guy to death. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kill, uh, rest, rest in peace. Unus freezes him and shatters him. Yeah. Into little pieces. Um, Magneto. And they're start saying like, Iceman's calling him out. He's like, man, you got to drop the death, death wish that you have. I can't believe you let that guy get the drop on you. And he's like, no, no, no. You know, Quicksilver would have stopped the bullet. And he's like, well, you know, this time, like he would have, but like, you need to cut it out. You get this idea that Magneto is suffering from some ennui. Yeah. Um, and we see it's because his dream is like dying. Like he's been losing this war. You know, the X-Men used to stand and this used to be a fight, but now the, you know, the soldiers of apocalypse are like, literally like we're fighting out a big pile of corpses. Mm-hmm. Like we're fighting out a big pile of our failures 
And this ends up being, you know, this isn't a really nuanced run, but this ends up making a lot of sense for uh, why Magneto is so quick to believe Bishop and this alternate reality. Like, not only is it cosmically good, you know, that he, you know, it's the right reality, like in that Here Comes Tomorrow sense, but it's also, it lets him off the hook in a way. Like, he doesn't have to live with these failures and all this death because it was never meant to be. It was, he was never meant that, to be the leader. Um, and I think that's like, yeah. could be taken as a condemnation as well of like, he, it was, he was the only person left and he was unable to complete the job. Um, not that Xavier yeah. was really able, like hanging a mission accomplished banner on the side of an aircraft carrier, but like he at least got some of the job done some of the time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He, he wasn't doing most of his fights against the Brotherhood of Evil Mutant on top of human corpses. <laughs> <You know? laughs> much so, Silver Age would have been much different if that would have been the case. <laughs> Just the new Londo Silver Age. Like. <laughs> <laughs> um. And yeah, so this is when Magneto starts talking about Charles Xavier and starts, you know, basically from his perspective, like he doesn't have the history that we do with him and like, oh, he, yeah, he died in my arms and he was the greatest man I ever knew. And he's the reason that I am trying to lead you against this tyranny that is apocalypse. Um, and it's not going so well. Um, meanwhile, uh, Sabretooth and Bishop are fighting one another. Um, he's yeah. revealed to be Magne- He's revealed to be Bishop with the big M on his face. And then just starts like yelling at Magneto, Legion, warp time, kill Xavier, let him die, not our world, <laughs> yeah. all twisted. And I'm like, what? <laughs> uh, yeah, they're, they're doing that thing. And Magneto recognizes him, but later hides that from his team, uh, which I really like. Uh, you know, and Magneto, there's this like, again, you know, in what good like character work and stuff there is in this first part, it's mostly Magneto, right? Where he uh, puts him to sleep, like he's just yelling all these things. And these things do mean something to Magneto. You know, but he's just like, oh, it's nonsense. I'm going to put you to sleep by slowing the, uh, the magnet, the iron flow to your blood. Um, and basically he wants answers, but he doesn't want his whole team not to trust him. Yeah. You know, and this is going to be like, just with these two first issues, uh, that I read today, like there's a lot of, there's somebody keeping a secret from the team or somebody like everybody has cross motives with one another. Um, and it's going to be. I think what is going to happen from what I remember of the rest of the series, it's going to be really hard to remember who's on whose side throughout all of this. Cause they're just going to change. Yeah. Yeah. Betrayals go round and around. Yeah. Um, they're going to take Bishop to the compound to, uh, investigate him. And they do a clever thing here because we don't know who's on whose team right now. So they cut over to beast, um, where he's experimenting on, uh, the blob and you could be forgiven for thinking, Hey, in this dark future, this is the compound. Yeah. Like the beast is an X man. Um, there, the, and he's like, we'll find out, we'll interrogate him. And I'm like, oh, here's the beast interrogating somebody back home. But this is actually in Mr. Sinister Zone, and this is setting up the Factor X uh, series from this. And this is Beast experimenting um, against Apocalypse's will uh, on mutants to try to figure out, like, kind of what makes them tick and what he can do. Um, kind of mm-hmm. a, again, this is you know, echoed in new, new X-Men where he was sublime and he was like trying to tear mutant genetics apart to put them back together again. Um, but dark beast is stopped by prelate havoc. Uh, the word mm-hmm. prelate here is like kind of a, I guess a commander kind of role. Um, yeah. I actually, uh, like havoc's design in this. Like it looks very militaristic and I like, like his big chonky fist that he's got going on. And he's just like shooting some beams at people and it's look, looks pretty dope. He, uh, he, he saves him from, he saves dark beast from, uh, blob. And for some reason, blob's an idiot now blob, like hurt, no bad. Uh, and I don't, I don't know why. Uh, but I love that scene where he shoots the beams and it actually like cuts off part of, uh, blob's shoulder. Like there's blood, which is not something that usually happens yeah. from, uh, from Havoc's powers. Um, and the idea, you know, we're introduced to these versions of these characters, personalities. Um, Hank McCoy is like a jokester, but he's an evil jokester. Mm-hmm. you know now uh havoc is super serious serious he's kind of the scott summers but for evil and speaking of uh he shows up uh in one of the most guns and roses redesigns in the entire i love it dude thing picture this dude yeah. <laughs> on the side of an aircraft carrier wearing sneakers that say psych on them and just diving and just <laughs> just crooning about his about his lost girlfriend or fiance or whatever it was that mm-hmm. axel was super upset about just picture this dude. Yeah. I'm picturing it, man. I, I'm picturing everybody having like a weird metal piece of clothing. Yeah. Like Cyclops metal arm and beast weird metal pants that he wears now. Yeah. Like dude, his absolutely. pants are, they're made of Colossus. 
And this Colossus timeline boots. Slash's top hat is basically the techno virus. I mean, that, just no, <laughs> there's no way you cannot. <laughs> you just have to immediately go there. Um, it's supposed to be raining in Seattle. Sweet November <laughs> raining in Seattle. At least it would do something about the smell of the corpses. Um, oh, yeah. Notably, um, uh, it looks like uh, Cyclops has lost an eye. So he's he's wearing yes. like, instead of like the one visor, uh, the one eye thing, he's wearing this thing that looks like a, um, it, it almost looks like a gamer set, like a gamer headset. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yep. It's it's bright gold, but only one of the eyes has the, the, the Ruby Quartz thing. Um, and it has this like hook down arm that goes over his mouth. So, which I can only imagine like amplifies his voice. So he sounds like more of a dickwad when he talks. It, it pitches it down. Because in, in this version, his one of his balls never dropped. That's why they call him Cyclops. Uh, and he, he's got a really high-pitched voice. So, um, Uno the Untouchable. The yes. one-balled man. Um, but he's, he's, like, playing good cop during this. He's like, what are you doing? Like, you're not supposed to be doing this. Like, this whole thing was supposed to be shut down. You know, there was a pact. It's called the Kelly Pact that Apocalypse made with the remaining humans. Um, so Cyclops, even though he is a soldier and he does exist in this world, he's still not totally a Nazi, you know, is the idea. Um, and everyone else is just like, no, this is what we do. You know, the, 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 this is traitor talk. You need to have a species uh, kind of loyalty. And this brings us as uh, Cyclops and Alex are kind of arguing sinister. Mr. Sinister enters the building. Um, mm-hmm. He's got dreadlocks because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. it's the nineties. It, it's dreadlock mullet. Dreadlock he's got, it's real mullet. short up top, flat top. Plus, uh, like it's like dreads that go down and then become braids. Uh, it's amazing. This he's is also, an amazing haircut. I don't want to put anybody on the Duck Feet Network on blast, but he's also kind of got uh, Jala's little heart shape thing happening on his forehead too, right? Oh, a little bit, yeah. Well, he's he's always had that little triangle, but he's added the hair bit to it. No, that's what I meant. The hair. Oh, oh yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's making like a little heart shape. So yeah, he's kind of he's yeah, got he, a rocking Jala style. He, this is the Jala of the age of this is the Jala of the age of apocalypse. <laughs> if I name if I name the episode title, this is the Jala of age of apocalypse. Like, how long do you think it would take before we get a DM of like what? I, <laughs> I, I don't. I, I I do not know. Uh, but he shows up to like tell them to break it up. Yeah, you know. Um, he, you know, will the Summers brothers ever get along? Uh, and that's you know, little wink, wink, because they they don't get along great in the real world. And I love immediately uh, Cyclops like, I- I'm sorry, Sinister. <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> Dad, I- I'm-, I'm sorry. And uh, Alex, like, they're very little kids. Yeah. Like, you have to understand, my brother started it. And Mr. <laughs> Sinister's like, I don't care who started it. I'm finishing it. Which is like, the, the paternal bits of this could not be more-, more over the top. And it's, you know, and this is specific because, like, he, he says that he raised them. So, like, with the absence of Charles Xavier to, you know, pick up Cyclops and kind of put, take him under his wing, Sinister was there with his weird genetic experiments. And, like, he's ready. And he took over the Cyclops boys and has yeah. raised them as kids. He literally calls them his sons. Yeah. Uh, later, you know. And that, so it's funny that Cyclops immediately puts himself into a subservient good boy role. But it also makes a kind of sense because this is literally his dad in this universe, you know? So, uh, they go for a walk. Mr. Sirens is like, you know, Hey, I have to, you know, I'm glad that you, I hope that you had fallen in my footsteps. Um, you know, I have to go. Uh, and he, you know, this is where he says like, sir, no, if it's something I've done. And he goes, not everything is about you, Scott, which Scott needed to hear a lot more in the real world as well. Um, and we get sinister has kind of a hero turn in this whole thing. Like he is instrumental in, this reality ending because he, you know, sinister is a villain, but he's not, he's always been more scientist than villain. Yeah. You know, and he recognizes this is wrong. Like this, this whole world, like this is the end of the world. Like mm-hmm. what we are doing is we're going to rule over ashes and corpses and who wants that? Yeah. You know, so I've got to take, take some moves. I spent a dozen lifetimes creating hell on earth and now I'll never be able to enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep, yep. Isn't it ironic? Yes. <laughs> And he basically implies that Scott, because uh, Scott immediately is like, Dad, I don't know what you mean. Can you please yes. explain this to me, Dad, in a way that I would understand? How many allowances <laughs> per hell are we talking about, Dad? Um, uh, and Sinister's like, y- 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 you have no idea. Like, I've sheltered you for way too long. Uh, you need to go figure this shit out on your own. 
Peace out. I'm going to get some cigarettes. I'll be right back. Um, yeah. and, Cycl- and Cyclops realizes, like, he th- until now, he thought he had all the answers. Now he realizes he didn't even know the questions. <laughs> what was his life like before this? What was knowing all the answers like for this version of Scott Summers? Yeah. Uh, uh, we, should mention, we should mention, too, like, this conversation is happening as they're walking, like, out. <laughs> what is this? What is, like, what is this? What is like, this the said world Seattle. bullshit? <laughs> yeah, this <laughs> like, just looks like random buildings that are, like, leading towards each other like weird sci-fi alien landscape kind of bullshit like it's just crazy yeah. smoke there's, is going it's on fire <laughs> like what yeah there's a building on the right that is shaped like a regular building except it's leaning over yeah like what like this is i know you're supposed to just trying to you know you're making futuristic domes there's like car crashes there's like two cars that look like they're crashing into each other on the lower left like that are floating in the air Oh, I thought that was it like is, a floating cop bot. <laughs> like, I don't know what I, that I, is. <laughs> no, nobody does. Like it is, uh, it's like this guy, this artist is better at figures than he is at backgrounds. Um, it is really hard to understand what the city looks like. Yeah. Uh, so rough stuff. It does not look like Seattle. Does not look like, no. I mean, I've only been to Seattle once and it was not, didn't have any cop bots that I saw. So maybe, maybe yeah. nowadays it does. Uh, it is, I mean, maybe this is quarantine Seattle. Like I was there on new year's, but I've not been there since. So, um, in the sky to set us up for the next sequence of events, Cyclops sees sentinels following, flying over. Um, and we switch over to angel, um, AKA Warren Worthington, um, who has basically mm-hmm. assembled a bunch of humans and, um, and mutants into what he calls heaven. Uh, and he's hiding everybody from uh, the Sentinels, which are chasing down humans. Uh, and everybody's kind of wondering how he can do that. Like how, what kind of connections does he have? Like, does he have some technology? And he's like, don't y'all don't worry about it. Let's just drink and party. And I've got a Jean Grey lookalike that's going to come and sing. And her name is Scarlet. Yeah. They, they get a human Jean Grey lookalike to come. And this is like very scandalous. They're trying to do kind of reverse uh, pros- prosecution stuff like this. It reminds me of like white people going to jazz clubs, you know, like being the idea here that like it's scandalous for mutants to come here and hang out with humans and see them perform. And this is going to be his plot during this arc is him having feelings for this, the Scarlet woman. Yeah. Um, he has karma of the uh, new mutants is his kind of bouncer, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and she tells him, you know, before this performance comes up of all these humans and mutants together, that Gambit is there. Uh, waiting for him at the back table she says yeah check the count the silver before he leaves we can't um we can't see a lot of angels design in all of this uh but he does have a huge ponytail um which Mm -hmm. is good and um he's wearing gloves that come up to about his forearms and a short sleeved shirt kind of like he's a dark souls Mm -hmm. character that's being you know you're just randomly trying (laughs) stuff on to see what the stats are he he definitely looks optimized for stats rather than fashion (laughs) souls yeah yeah. he's going for poison (laughs) resistance in this outfit right (laughs) um yeah so yeah, Gambit. It's time for Gambit to show up. Uh, Carmen tells yep. him that Gambit is going to show up, uh, and Gambit is there looking to try to figure out how to get in contact with Magneto. Um, and Angel protests and says, "Like, hey, I don't, I don't know. He's a terrorist. How would I know?" He's like, "Oh, you know, because Angel spells sideways as Angle." And I'm like, "All right, Gambit. <laughs> so we're in it, huh? We're in it." <laughs> Some sideways. I I am disappointed by how competent and not an idiot Gambit is during this entire thing. His voice yeah. is really funny. But he's not enough of an idiot, which I, I wish he was more. Um, he calls every girl Cher, every man Mon Ami, uh, but that's it. Uh, you owe me four in Louisiana, Warwin. Come true. Come true. You know? uh, so something happened in Louisiana, uh, we get, and uh, Angel says he'll pay the debt, um, but you have to never come around again. We don't know who's watching, and we see Sebastian Shaw yeah. looking down on them. So that's going to be uh, the plot there. We go back over to Westchester County, or as the book references, what's left of it. Uh, Magneto has basically been hired, hiding most of this using electromagnetic cloaking, and this is the X-Men's hidden base. Um, mm-hmm. and over time, a dozen mutants ca- and more have called it home. Some live here, and some are buried here. So we're still yep. doing the... Okay, so so cemetery on the grounds then. So that has not changed when Xavier died. <laughs> we still pull yep. pay paper in car- cars, and we still bury yep. our, our dead loved ones. like just Right outside the window. This. Good, 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 good. You'll never get over this. Uh, <laughs> and uh, a, a pretty obscure, I mean, I don't know if this is actually supposed to be the nanny that is the X-Men villain, but they have a robo nanny now uh, who is uh, taking care of baby and not baby, like full head of hair, toddler Xavier, who still lives in a crib. Um, I, I think that this guy is not good at drawing kids. 
Oh, this this is, did you see the TikTok going around? Did you see the large baby discussion? I've seen week? I've seen large baby. This, uh, this I, is I, I large was here baby. for all the versions of large <laughs> baby, which is both like people making fun of it and then like all of the discourse about whether it's okay to make fun of it. And I was like, I can't do this right now, man. Like, you, I got to get offline. Yeah. <laughs> like I I logged off immediately in the face of large baby. Leon had Leon had the best take when he was like, the baby is normal size, the bed and the man are tiny. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, very funny. Um, but then but yeah. someone popped up and it's like, I can't believe you're making fun of a baby. And I'm like, it doesn't matter. Yeah. The baby doesn't, I, like, the baby doesn't exist. The baby's like, a baby. Yeah, <laughs> the baby's a baby. And it's like, it's an internet stranger. And the baby's not going to like, I don't imagine that baby's going to grow up with issue. Like there will be any consequence to people making fun of an anonymous baby. Oh God, Gary, we're going to be 60 and reading articles on the internet of like, do you remember large baby? Here he is now yeah. <laughs> holding a tiki torch and man. burning down the white yeah. house. <laughs> <laughs> And large baby became medium man it is now <laughs> burning. <laughs> oh God, I hate this world. Um, so anyway, rogue is coming in to check in on her, uh, her son, yes. her large baby, um, being taken over. And this is again, full head of hair, but it's like, mama, daddy coming. Like he's got a real me doing an impression of a baby voice. Yes. Uh, I love a uh, scary Magneto popping up in the background. Going right here, son. I don't know if my ear is emphasized. You got the shadow eyes. It's very spooky. Daddy, do you want to play with me? And he's like, I am in full regalia right now. I cannot play with you, child. <laughs> what is this thing called play? Daddy said no play during cloak time. And this is obviously cloak time. <laughs> cloak time. <laughs> Have Nanny check your eyes. Get out the optimatrix. Um, you know, he he's saying he wants to play, but uh, cat's in the cradle. Um, we find out the baby's name is Charles, mm-hmm. uh, and they're like, mother will help you with your prayers. And rogue does the Lord's prayer, but ends with something called the Madri yeah. instead Excuse of the me? devil. What uh, is the Madri? <laughs> I, I, we, we, I, we find out, and I think it's actually really cool, uh, in this, but it's so funny that like, instead of praying to God, they inserted instead of Satan, uh, multiple man, uh, it's very funny to me. I'm trying to remember uh, if I die before I wake, if the Madri come before I wake. Yeah, Jesus. Okay, that's yeah. not terrifying or anything. Yeah, it kind, um, it, yeah, it kind of rhymes with die, but yeah, you know, it's a very specific form of death. So, so if multiple man comes and smothers you in in your crib, baby Charles, this is what happens. <laughs> I can't finish unless multiple man is choking me. So <laughs> it's going to work out real well for me. Um, Rogue is is very sad because Rogue always has to have this subplot of not being able to touch things. She can't touch her child um, because yeah. that would it would hurt the child. So she's she's like he needs my touch, and Eric's like I know. And then it's on to interrogate uh, Bishop, who is still insisting that, that he saw Magneto's crimes. He knows exactly what happened to Charles Xavier, and uh, Magneto is like, you know what? Instead of you saying things, maybe I should just zap you back into the wall. Yeah, maybe you'll stay silent and zaps him because he's about to, he says, tell me, tell them exactly what happened. He's like, and Magneto doesn't want this out. Yeah. You know, again, um, he wants to find out, but he wants to, you know, uh, he doesn't want to, you know, get disloyalty amongst his troops. Um, he's like, Hey, Gene was lost to us, you know? So that's implying something happens there. As he says, you know, we, he says, we don't have telepathic abilities. Um, why don't you touch him and, uh, get his, uh, get his memories. And I think that might be a good place to to call it yeah. for this half. And then yeah. we can probably still cruise through generation next number one in the next issue. Okay. Uh, finish this one off. And then because generation next number one, not a lot happens other than the setup. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, this is our introduction into AOA Detroit mm-hmm. Avenue. Um, this, <laughs> <laughs> uh a lot of a lot of crazy over the top arc uh we're still trying to figure out who these characters are and like what their what their allegiances are and uh i'm i'm kind of into this gary like i'm, yeah. I'm very much into it so far oh yeah I, I love this comic like i'm i'm way into this just a uh, non-stop uh set of uh seeing these reinterpretations yeah of characters like it's fun like the pacing is fun in this, like jumping around from these different plots and not all these plots are equal, which will become like when we actually start reading the issues will become a thing, Yeah, you know, like I remember, uh, like the gamut, the externals thing with Leela Cheney going in space and dealing with like alternate reality. Shiar really sucking. Oh, oof, um, oof. you know, 
We're gonna skim through some of those, huh? <laughs> yeah, I just I just remember it. I didn't skim through it, but like, no, I'm will. saying we, we are going to skim through some of yeah, those yeah. and be like, today we, we're covering four issues of <laughs> Gambit and the Externals. Um, you know, but it's uh, there are really good plots here, and this first issue we're just moving between them is pretty fun. Yeah, I like I this think. a lot. It's been it's been really good yeah. so far. Um, if you like this podcast. The best way to show your love and support is by going to patreon.com slash TV. Second best way is to leave a review on uh, your podcast service of choice. And the third best way is to tell Will to use about it. I don't, I don't mm-hmm. know why you would want to do that, but it's, it, is a, it is a way that you could appreciate the podcast. It helps us out a lot. Yeah, it really does. At Plumber Duck on Twitter is probably the best way to get at him. Um, <laughs> thank you to, thank you to it, everybody. It is, so, it is so just that you do that since he, you know, we do that to you. Oh, yeah. I, it will bother Will more than it bothers you i think which i'm not saying that to discourage you it's just uh will's got an interesting relationship with online uh and it is it's time for reaping what he has sown i've um Uh, i've 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 been listened to a lot of will talking on everything to guppy i've met will in person um I've, mm -hmm. i've done arguably improv comedy with will on a stage before um and i definitely feel like i would call him a friend um, but mm-hmm. I get the feeling every time I reply to him on Twitter, I'm doing him a disservice in some way. <laughs> like I am, yeah. I am denying him honor by replying to a tweet from, from whatever he says. And uh, it's very funny to me if people add him for no reason whatsoever. It just yeah, to tell yeah. him that like the new episode of Days of Future Cast. So. You know, it, it's great. Like he 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 is into it for the game portions of it. It's just also will and online is a very weird fucking thing. Oh yeah. So definitely. it's it's wonderful. So, um yeah. So so uh, torture him, everybody. Um, and <laughs> we'll see you next time see you, see you on the next episode everybody yeah. these, these are the tales of the <laughs>